Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Alan Tracy from the RISD Career Center. And um, I'm so happy to introduce Maddie Reyna from um, Oxbow. So Maddie is the Assistant Director of Academic Programming um, at Oxbow School of Art and Artist Residency. And um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on introductions. I'm going to just turn things right over because there's a lot of ground to cover with Oxbow. Um, there's so many awesome things about it. And um, Maddie, right over to you. Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for Alan for helping me troubleshoot this little presentation tonight. Um, yeah, I am from Oxbow School of Art, and we are an artist residency and school in Saugatuck, Michigan. Um, I'm going to get into more details about that, but um, you all as RISD students are eligible for a handful of fully funded opportunities this coming summer. Um, and I'm gonna go into detail what those opportunities are for you all and talk about how you can apply and what they look like. So um, I have about 20 to 25 minutes of material to cover. Great. And um, I would be happy to take questions either via chat or uh, you know, you're welcome to ask them at the end. But I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> Okay, look good there. You see the yep, definitely Perfect. yeah. Thanks, so man. this is um this is one of the views from our crow's nest. Uh, we are located on 115 acres of wooded dunes in Saugatuck, Michigan. Um, we have a beautiful three mile hiking trail right on our campus, um, and it's a really special place to go each summer. So our mission is to connect artists to a network of creative resources, people and ideas, an energizing natural environment and rich artistic history and vital future. Um, you, uh, we were established in 1910, so we're 111 years old. Um, we were established by two faculty members from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And each summer since then, um, artists, students, and educators have gathered along a lagoon in Saugatuck, Michigan. We are about two and a half hours from Chicago on Lake Michigan. Um, and this coming summer in 2022, our 12 week season will host residencies and classes with about 50 students enrolled in each session. And to speak a little bit about our facilities on campus, we have diverse classes, diverse artists coming every summer. Um, our classes range in focus from functional to sculptural, from to traditional to contemporary, from representational to conceptual. We have six studio classrooms on campus. All are open 24 hours, except for the glass blowing studio. Um, we have a print studio, a painting and drawing studio, a metal studio, a ceramic studio, the glass studio, and a paper making studio. So then for you all, how can you come to Oxbow this summer? Um, as a partnership student, RISD has a partnership with Oxbow. You are eligible for any of the fully funded opportunities that I'm gonna go over. There are three of them tonight. Um, the first is as a student, you could come and take a class on our campus. And we offer one, two or three week classes this summer. Um, you could also come as a fellow. This is a really special experience. It's a six week residency where fellows come to our campus they have a private studio, they receive a stipend, and they live on campus for six weeks with faculty, staff, and other students, or as a resident. So this is like the fellowship, but it's shorter. Um, and it is open to anyone, not just uh, RISD students, but you are eligible for this as well. Um, as a resident, you could come and live on campus for three weeks with a private studio on campus. So I'll go over these three opportunities and then talk about how to apply. Uh, the first one I want to speak about is the biggest one, the fellowship. This is a really special experience. Um, each summer we're offering 12 students from nations all over the world um, the opportunity to come to Oxbow to focus on their work, to meet with renowned artists and grow as members of our unique community. Fellows live on campus for six weeks where in addition to providing support labor to our nonprofit, um, you will participate in all areas of campus life. So fellowship students are either selected by Oxbow's jury or departments at one of our partnering schools. And the application is based on the merit of your work and your commitment to making an inspired and innovative art. 
Um, the fellowship program is a once in a lifetime opportunity to participate with an engaging artist run community. So what do you receive as a fellow student? Uh, fellowships recipients receive a studio space with 24 hour access. The stipend is $285 per week for research work in your studio and related labor on campus. Um, all fellows and students receive free housing and meals for the duration of their visit. Um, fellows also are a priority to receive studio visits with the visiting artists that we have come through every single week. So you would have up to six, maybe more uh, studio visits uh, over the course of six weeks. And then you also have the opportunity to exhibit your work in our on-campus gallery who can apply for the fellowships. So students from partner schools must be undergraduate students in the junior, senior year or MFA students. So you have to have a graduation date of December, 2021 or later. Um, you must be at least 21 years old at the start of the fellowship and have the ability to work in the US or have a work visa. So in 2022, fellows will live on campus for six weeks, either as early summer or late summer fellows. The dates are May 30th to July 8th for the early summer, um, July 18th to August 26th for the late summer. These are things that will be repeated on the application if you're interested and you would just indicate which section you're interested in. Um, and then I wanted to list our partner schools that we work with. So your cohort of fellows would be um, from these other schools, Cooper Union, Cranbrook, uh, Grand Valley State University, Kansas City Art Institute, um, Pratt, RISD, SAIC, UT Austin, and Tyler School of Art. Okay, so something kind of special about the fellowship this year. In summer 2022, six of the 12 fellows fellowships that we offer will serve applicants with interest in specific fields of study, including forestry, forestry and landscape, historic preservation and archiving, arts administration, culinary arts, photography and communications, or glass. Um, and you don't necessarily have to indicate that you're interested in one of these fields of study, but we do have staff on hand who are available to mentor and develop a close relationship with fellows that select one of these fields of study um, and are selected to be a fellow. Um, the other six fellowships will sort of be our classic open fellowships where you come and you work in the studio in any material you want to bring to campus um, in any fashion that way. You don't necessarily have to say, you know, you're one of these six sort of specific fellows. So if you're interested in being a 2022 Summer Fellow at Oxbow, you should apply for this fully funded, funded opportunity via the application on our website. This application is gonna go live at the beginning of the year and is due February 21st. Um, I think that we were, are gonna be sending you all links once that stuff goes live. So you will get reminders about that. Um, but just as a right, reminder, yes, you do need to apply through our website. Um, then you, as you're applying, consider taking on one of the fields of study and indicate this in your application. Indicate on the application which summer term is best for you. And then in March, you'll receive a fellowship confirmation and note from Oxbow, and then we'll do a meet and greet and Zoom and we'll help you prepare for your trip to come out uh, to Sagatuck. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, to get into our summer classes. So, um, this summer, we will be hosting 12 weeks of classes from June 5th to August 27th. Um, we have a rich history of connecting artists to new skills, supportive mentors, and inspiring nature. Um, with our 2022 program, we're celebrating this history and inviting the current generation of Oxbow participants to engage in our unique ability to host classes that bridge craft and concept, play and focus, and allow students to explore new techniques in the one, two, or three week setting. Um, all of our core classes are open to anyone over 18 and are available as for credit or non-credit enrollments. Um, for you all, that would be a non-credit enrollment. Class on our campus meets every day during the session, including any weekend. So it, for a two-week class, you're on campus for 13 days and you have class every single day. Um, class is from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And during each session, we also host an exciting calendar of events after class, including visiting artist lectures, spontaneous workshops, and other socials. 
So we will be announcing our, um, our catalog of classes, which will be over 50 classes in January. This is also gonna come out January 1, but I wanted to present uh, a selection of some classes that are already confirmed that really speak to what we are um, as an institution and give you a taste of what's happening this summer. Um, so that's a bit of an overview, but the first one I want to speak about is wood fire and sustainability in clay. So in our ceramic studio, um, John Hook will be um, operating our wood fire class. In this class, students participate in daily demonstrations, exploring new techniques and consider aesthetics with a focus on sustainable and regenerative processes in the ceramic field. This class is tailored to students of any skill level and will culminate with a wood fire and presentation of final projects. So we do have a wood firing kiln on campus and every summer we get it going for a big, exciting wood fire. Um, we also will be hosting paper making uh, this summer with Andrea Peterson. This is an amazing class that we've had on our campus for over 20 years with Andrea. Um, she's awesome with building paper sculpture. Paper pulp can be transformed into sculptural works, drawings with pulp and unusual surface textures. Stretch your conceptual and technical skills to create unusual works of art. This is really one of our most popular flagship classes. This year it's going to be a two-week class in June. For one of our one week classes, we are inviting um, artist Jacqueline Silverman to come back and teach wet plate photography. So this is a really sort of ancient style of photography using historic and time honored wet plate collodion processes. Students will move between the studio and the natural environment to create glass plate images and photographic objects. If you take that class, you leave with some really awesome photos. And then uh, I do want to speak about our glass blowing studio. So this facility is really special on our campus. Um, this year we will be hosting beginning glass blowing with artist Corey Pemberton in the glass in the hot shop. It's a very hands on experience for the beginner. Honestly, all of our classes, all of our all of our classes, but especially in the glass blowing studio are open to beginners. Um, participants learn a variety of techniques from manipulating hot molten glass into vessel and sculptural forms. And then finally, I wanna speak about multi-level foundry with Brent Harris. So this is happening in our metal studio. In this multi-level metal casting course, students learn the fundamentals of pattern generation, simple and multi-part mold making techniques with sodium silicate bonded sand, and then you will cast with bronze and aluminum and finish um, your pieces with patination techniques for casting. So just a really special experience um, and a really good way to spend two weeks learning something that maybe you don't know how to do, or maybe you do and you want to hone your skills. Um, but this is something that's really fun about Oxbow is that you can try something new. So if you're interested in taking one of our one, two or three week classes, you will apply via the same application. So you're going to apply to the fellowship. Um, it's very similar to our application for other students to, to take. The application is very similar. It's just based on your portfolio. So we're asking you all to use that same application and you would be able to indicate on the application, you know, if you want to steer towards the fellowship or if you actually prefer enrolling in one of the workshops. Um, we are going to release the full catalog uh, in January or the end of December. And we'll make sure that you get a list of all those classes that are available. And then we'll send you a message in March. Um, you'll get your syllabus and supply list and prepare for your trip out to Sagatuck. And then the final opportunity that's available to you all is a stint as a resident on our campus. So our Summer Artist in Residence program offers 12 artists the time, space, and community to encourage growth and experimentation in their practice for three weeks on campus. Um, these residencies are held while our core classes are happening, while community programs are in session, and at the same time as the fellowship. So it's a really good opportunity for folks that want to come to Oxbow and want a residency, but don't necessarily want the full six-week experience. Um, during this time, the small group of residents have access to our community of students, faculty, and visiting artists and programming. And you can see the three week chunks of dates there that are available for you to indicate on the application that you would like to come. So what do residents receive? You get a raw studio space. Um, the classroom studios are not available 
officially, but you could speak to the faculty and say, hey, I'd like to come in and use the, you know, the lithography tools or something like that. And I'm sure we could work it out. Um, you receive a private room, all bathrooms um, and showers are shared on campus. You receive three meals per day and access to the visiting artists and faculty for studio visits. Um, you do get to participate in our evening artist lectures and there are opportunities to share your work through slide presentations and, pre and readings. So if you're interested in being a summer 2022 resident at Oxbow, you should apply for this opportunity through our website. It's a different application than the fellowship. So when you get the link that says, hey, come apply, uh, you'll be able to see there's the resident, there's the fellowship, there's the class, um, but it is very similar. It's based on your portfolio. And then we'll reach out to you in March. You'll receive that confirmation. We'll talk about the dates and we'll help you prepare for your trip out. Um, so yeah, as you consider, I'm gonna go into a little bit about what life is like on campus. Um, we have dormitory style housing with shared and single rooms available. As I said, all bathrooms are shared on campus. Um, we use antiviral cleaning agents for all cleaning purposes twice daily. DIY cleaning kits are available in common areas of all dorms, all cabins, all studios, and community members are expected to pitch in and keep themselves in their spaces clean. There's always a number of activities to participate in uh, around campus after class hours, including the visiting artist lectures. Faculty also give lectures every week. Um, you could hike through our 115 acres of dunes on the Crow's Nest Trail. Um, students love to explore the lagoon and the beach along Lake Michigan. As I said, we are right on a lagoon. We have tons of canoes for folks to um, borrow. We play volleyball all the time, relax around the campfire, um, and then just other spontaneous evening events are always going on. Okay, and then your meals. So uh, students enjoy healthy and delicious meals prepared each day by our talented kitchen staff. Locally sourced ingredients are used as much as possible. Three meals per day are included in any of the opportunities that I spoke about tonight. Um, our chefs are happy to accommodate your dietary restrictions and you just got to let us know um, of any allergies or requirements that you have upon registration. So I'll speak a little bit about what's going on with COVID with us. Um, as of September of this year, all participants who come to Oxbow must provide proof of vaccination before arriving to campus. Uh, COVID test is required 72 hours prior to your arrival. We do recommend that folks quarantine for two weeks prior to coming to campus. We will also be sending you a questionnaire to be filled out 48 hours prior to your arrival on campus, confirming that you've not been exposed and that you don't have any symptoms currently. Um, and then class, uh, the masks are required indoors during class and encouraged at all times. Okay, and this is my last slide. Um, just a little overview here. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them tonight. You can also email me anytime at ox-bow at saic.edu. Uh, we will be sending you follow-up information via email, but you can also check out our website, which I think you all have the link to. If you wanna sign up to our newsletter, which is a, like a, just a little form at the very bottom of our homepage, you'll automatically get those, that information about when a new application has opened up. Um, or when the catalog becomes available, you could download a copy of that from our website as well. And then uh, I just wanna encourage everybody to, maybe a, a bit of an easier way to follow what's going on is just to follow us on Instagram. It's at Oxbow School of Art. And nice. that's all I got. Nice, Thank Maddie. you, everyone. Um, Maddie, I just wanna clarify, cause like there's a lot that you just covered. <laughs> yeah. So the, the opportunity, so there's three basic opportunities um, one is the, the residency that it, there's a st RISD student that's um, assured a space. There's also, so that's like, that's, that's the, the fellowship, fellowship. That, yes. that you're participating, but you're also working during that um, as part of the crew that's keeping things going at, at the residency. Then the second is during that as a class and that there is a RISD spot as well for the class. But then the residency you're simply applying for, and that is not a held space, true? That's correct, yes. Okay. So the fellowship and the class, um, you there's one guaranteed spot in each of those for a RISD student. 
um, and you would apply through the same application. The residency is wide open and fully funded. So if you don't get what you want or want something that's only three weeks, um, you're encouraged to apply to that as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, I'll, I'll step out of the way in a second. So if you apply, do you have to choose one? Can you like just apply for everything? Nope, um, the application most likely will be tailored toward the fellowship. Um, so if you were more interested in saying like, I actually really only wanna take this class and I'm a RISD student and this is what I wanna be considered for. And maybe you're not even eligible for the fellowship, you know, there will be a way for you to indicate that. Got it. Um, but really the fellowship is, is the, the sort of special thing to go for. Cool. Cool. Thank you. So Thank please, you. like, we'll open up the floor. Um, you know, uh, uh, students, please just um, unmute yourself and ask your questions as you wish. Yeah. Um, hi. My name is Pianchi. Um, I just had one small question, two questions, actually. Sure. Um, can you apply for, like, both times? Like, if you're not really particular about applying, um, you know, because there's two, six weeks kind of um timings that you guys are offering so can you just apply for like an open timing like whatever type of thing or do you have to choose yeah they're on the website it'll say you know I, I have to be an early summer fellow because of my schedule or I have to be a late summer fellow or you could say I have no preference definitely okay yeah I'm sorry yeah um apply so you guys talk about the ability to work in the U.S. so like have a work visa of sort like a work permit yes yeah, so mm -hmm. I was just wondering um, what that's like, like um, do you guys give out work time? It's also like, yeah. Yeah, I think, so you do, you know, because you're getting paid, um, you do have to either have a work visa or be eligible to work in the U.S. In the past, when we've worked with international fellows, um, they have worked with the international office at their own school to ensure that they have the right, um, you know, the sort of right forms to be able to go forward and get that, get that stipend. So that's for the fellow, for, for right. the class. Is it true for the class okay. as well? Okay. No, because there's no, you don't, you're not getting a stipend either taking mm -hmm. the class or as the three week resident. That's mm -hmm. just for the fellowship. So okay. if you're an international student and you do receive the fellowship, um, you know, you should probably, even before you hear back from us, have a basic conversation with the international office and say like, you know, I, I'm in the running for this thing um, that requires me to have a work visa. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Cool, yeah. I have a question really quickly. Um, is transportation to and from Oxbow covered by Oxbow itself or do we have to pay out of pocket for that if we're selected? Yeah, um, travel is not covered by Oxbow. So we can help set that up for you. There's lots of different routes that we can help you figure out, but no, that is not um, part of the funding. Um, okay, question. Hi. Uh, um, I wanted to ask, um, it looks so cool and beautiful there. It definitely looks really rural. How far are you guys from, you know, civilization? That's a fun question. I mean, when you're there, you really do feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. The nights are so quiet. You can see all of the stars. Um, but the truth is Saugatuck is a resort town and we are five minutes from the the, de the main area where they're in the summer, there are lots of people. Um, we're really close to a spot called Oval Beach, which is a really sort of popular beach center in Michigan. So you can actually walk there from Oxbow's campus. So it's kind of this weird yes and no. Um, we don't have great Wi-Fi on campus. Uh, the cell phone service is not great either. And it definitely, you know, there's animals around. So it has this feeling of, you know, It'll, yeah, being in the middle of nowhere, but uh, there's a grocery store nearby. There's a laundromat nearby. Uh, you could even walk there if you really needed to. Anybody you, else? You know why others are thinking, I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about the lectures and things that happen in the evening? Like, 
you mentioned um, guest lecturers and faculty. So like, what is that like? How scheduled is it and how spontaneous is it? I guess like, what's yeah, that so, spectrum look like? Mm -hmm. So our classes um, always start on a Monday. And that first day, that Monday night, we schedule lectures from the faculty that have just shown up for that first session of classes. So there's usually about two hours of lectures. I think we do eight to 10. Um, since COVID, we've been hosting these outside on the meadow with a projector. So it's a really fun sort of after dinner, come hang out um, and listen to these lectures and ask questions. Um, so that happens on Mondays from the faculty. And then on Thursdays, the visiting artists give a lecture as well. So there's only ever one visiting artist per week, but they do rotate out. Um, and they give about an hour presentation on their work. And then at that meeting, um, as they, you know, as they come to campus, a sign up sheet becomes available where anyone on campus could sign up for a studio visit with the visiting artists. Um, I did mention that there are sort of priority spots there available for the fellows, um, but then there are extra spots for anyone else who specifically wants to work with that artist. Um, and we're consistently bringing in visiting artists from all over the world, you know, tons of professional artists from New York and abroad. Um, and I'm excited for you all to see that list when it comes out in the catalog. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We do also host um, Friday night uh, dance parties on the meadow. So when you get there, the theme for that Friday night's party will be announced. We have a costume closet. I mean, it's just, it, that's a really fun, uh, always Friday night thing too. Thanks so much for the presentation. Um, I might have missed this briefly, but when does the um, when does the application open? Yeah, so it's going to open beginning of the year, January one. Uh, it'll open up, and then it's due February twenty first. So um, stay tuned. I think you're going to get a ping in your inbox from us that you know says, "Hey, this is happening. You can start to apply." Um, but yeah, get you don't have to worry about it until uh, after Christmas. Yeah, and I, I can tell you that we will, um, I'm looking at my tentative calendar and it looks like January 14th is the first time that we will notify the students who are eligible to apply. Um, and it's, you know, there's a lot, there's um, in very specific instructions to get to Oxbow's website and, and engage this way. So we will start prompting you um, and that'll happen a few times. It's like, you know, every couple of weeks until it closes. So just so you know, we will remind you of this. And one follow up, and this might be more for Alan actually too. Um, I'm in the, the MID program, which isn't technically an MFA, but it is a studio based um, mm. program. I, I noticed that like MFA was mentioned, like the, um, would I still be eligible to, to apply uh, with that? Yeah, you know, um, Maddie, is that a, I mean, because you know, we send this out to all grad students in general, um, and you know, and I know that there may only be, you know, mostly interested um, from the MFA group, but um, but those yeah, who, from, I mean, we're all over the place. You know, our students are, are definitely dip into different areas. So um, from our end, um, you know, I think that we do not we do not require the fellow to be getting an MFA. I think it's more like junior, senior, or graduate student. Um, cool. So yeah, yeah, that's that's our stipulation. We do have some partners who they only make it available to, let's say, the sculpture students or something yeah. like that. But I think that RISD is a little bit more open where, you know, I, I, is, does that sound right to you, yeah. Alan, that you guys no, are I more can, open? As long as Oxbow is good with it. I mean, we have, in all years past, Maxwell, we've sent it to every grad student that is out there. So, you know, just keep an eye for that. And and yes, like the answer is yes. RISD is not restricting that at all. Um, so I, I can, that's definite. I just wanted to confirm with Maddie that yeah. nothing's changed that way on their end. Sounds like you're good to go. Yeah. And you know what I should say too, you know, the Career Center, um, we, you know, the Career Advisors, if anybody is interested in going over their materials, um, whether it's written materials or, you know, image selection, um, you know, even, you know, order of images, how you want to present your application, 
um, please, you know, you can, you can email me for an appointment. I definitely meet with students around artist residency programs in general, um, but all the career advisors are very prepared to, to help with this type of application. And maybe I'll say one thing about the application, you know, besides it being based on your portfolio, the thing that um, our panelists, so Oxbow ourselves, we do not participate in, in selecting the fellows. Um, we either work with the partner schools directly or we have a diverse uh, group of arts professionals who rank and review and end up end up selecting the fellows and you know they're these panelists are always familiar with oxbow we always have to tr we usually try to hire a, a previous fellow as well um, to sit in on this panel and really consider who they think would um, you know grow the most from coming to our facility and so there i think there are a couple of essay questions on the on the application that really center around why you want to come to our our facility or our campus specifically. Yeah, and you know what, I'll clarify too, RISD is not selecting the, 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 the students that get to participate in this. We, um, you know, we help with applications, but we do not make that selection ourselves. I have another question if no one has one. Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, you talked about, um, you know, the kind of specific field of study interest um, where you mentioned like culinary arts and stuff like that. Can you talk a bit more about that and like what that entails and like, yeah, just a bit about that. Yeah, so, um, you know, we really just wanted to try to bring in, uh, in, I mean, this kind of goes back to how I can answer that MFA question. We want to bring in students from different disciplines, um, not just art disciplines. You can be an MFA and say, hey, I'm interested actually in working in culinary arts. Food is a part of my practice already. Um, we, our staff are all artists as well. So those that work in the kitchen or our culinary director, for example, wants to make himself available to work with young artists and talk about how culinary arts has factored into his artistic career um, and culinary career. So we, you know, we have a handful of staff who have made themselves available to sort of mentor the fellows and walk with them through this six week experience. Um, and so instead of working independently in your studio, um, making paintings or, you know, which is still totally valid and exciting. Um, you do have the opportunity to say, hey, like, I think I might want to work with the, with the arts administration uh, mentor and really get some professional experience in that realm um, with a mentor who may be able to offer that to you. Uh, for example, our glass fellow, you know, the work that they do, which all fellows do on campus, the work that they do is tied to the glass studio. So they are not necessarily asked to, you know, help out with the events that we have going on that aren't related to the glass studio. So each one of the fields of study is a little bit different. And I will say that there will be more explanation fully of what you would be looking at as one of these fields of study artists. But for your purposes now, I would really just encourage you to look at your practice and think, do any of those fields of study, you know, are any of those fields of study something that I want to enhance in my own practice, my own professional, you know, tract? Um, and then this is a good way to, to start out doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry to have missed the beginning of this meeting, but will all this information and specifically the application process be available through RISD or through Oxbow? Yeah, so the application is on our website. Um, and once those go live, which is going to happen uh, the first week in January, um, it sounds like you all are going to get a link in mid-January to say like, hey, that's available. You can start applying to this. But it's not through a, a RISD process. You would apply through the Oxbow website. Yep. And we're actually recording this session which will be referenced. Um, we'll probably just post it to the, our website where we keep all the recordings, but we'll also reference it in that email when you get that um, the second week of January.
So now's really just the time to be introduced to the opportunities, figure out what, what you might be eligible for and what you want to do. Um, over the Christmas break, think a little bit about why you wanna to come to Oxbow and then in January, be prepared to um, you know, fine tune those images and, and upload that application. Super. So, do we have any more questions for Maddie while she's here? Oh, um, I have one, and that is like, if you know that you're really interested in expanding on one of the disciplines in your practice, but as of yet, like, don't have the most experience in it, is that, is it still advisable to apply? Like, how much experience do you need in the discipline that you choose if it's something that you really, really, really want to learn about? If you really want to learn it, you don't have to have any experience. I mean, we we want this to be an opportunity for you all to develop some professional skills that you want to have for your practice. So yeah, especially for the forestry and landscape, the culinary arts, the arts administration, the communications and photography, um, there is no experience required. Um, the Glass Fellow, you know, that is a specific experience that we have tied to Tyler School of Arts Glass Department. So that one's a little bit different. Those students do have to have that experience. Um, but all of the other ones, I would say, you know, if you if you've got a bug and you want to learn about that thing, put it on your application. You know, we we want folks to respond to these and, and to try something new. So with that said. The images that you provide, we're not, if you're interested in um, learning this new skill set, just, you know, provide your best images of the work that you've been making, right, Maddie, is that? Exactly. The fellowship is really about getting to know you. Um, so if you are a painter and you upload images of the paintings that you have been working on this year, but you say, hey, I think I want to participate in culinary arts, there's no panelist who's going to cut that against you and say, well, they're not making food art or something like that. It's, it's more about your passion and what you, what you want to build, how you want to craft this experience. That's our email address. You can follow us. Um, we might be sending, I think we're going to be sending you all some hard copies of the catalog, um, but otherwise you can also download it when it comes out uh, in the new year. Super. Well, this is great. If, if, if that's it for the student questions, um, Maddie, I want to thank you so much for making time to be here. Um, you know, our relationship with Oxbow, we're so excited to keep it going. Um, I, I mean, there's, it, I think that um, similar to the way people feel an affinity to RISD and the community that they get to know here, um, including the alumni community that is after you leave RISD, you know, Oxbow has a very similar feel from what I've heard from people who have attended. Um, they're, you know, they, they dig in, they get to know this place and the people there, um, and then they've made relationships that last um, an incredibly long time, you know, could be lifelong afterwards. So, um, so thank you for sharing about Oxbow, a really special place. And thank you all for being here tonight. And um, just watch for the indication that the application's open and um, the Career Center is available to help you if you wish. Uh, no pressure on that. Um, we are available though. So should we say good night, Maddie? Is that it? That sounds great. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm awesome. excited to see your applications. Thank you.